Now that we have our concept of continuity in place, we can introduce one additional limit law. If you'll kindly recall, we had limit laws for sums, differences, constant multiples, products, quotients, all sorts of things. We're going to introduce one more, and it's for a composition. If I'm interested in taking the limit as x approaches a of a composition of two functions, then I can move the limit to the inside of the outer function and take the function of the limit as x approaches a of g of x, provided that this limit actually exists. Now, this allows us to extend our concept of continuity to include domains of functions. So here's an important theorem that we're going to reference back to many times throughout the course of the semester. The following functions are continuous, continuous on their domains. There are two that we've already talked about, and they are polynomial, whose domain is automatically all real numbers, as well as rational functions, which are continuous on their domains, and the only domain issues that you're going to run into are where denominators are equal to zero. However, this is also going to apply to root functions, to exponential functions, exponential, exponential. Wow, I think I'll just try that one again. Exponential, there we go. Uh, inverse of exponential, logarithmic, which does have a built-in domain issue. Uh, we also have trigonometric, Sine and cosine have a domain of all real numbers. However, uh, the other four have certain domain issues. And then we have our inverse trigonometric functions. Now what that means for us is that if you are capable of finding a domain, you are capable of finding the uh, intervals on which a function is continuous. So as an example, Determine the intervals, interval or intervals, on which the function f of x is equal to, uh, let's do the natural log of 3 minus x divided by x squared minus 1 is continuous. Now, given that this is a combination of a rational function, a polynomial function, and a natural log function, what we're going to do is find the domain. So, rules for domain that we currently have. The argument of a logarithm must be a positive number. Therefore, 3 minus x has to be greater than 0. Additionally, a denominator is not allowed to be equal to 0, so x squared minus 1 is not equal to 0. Solving these using a little bit of algebra, we can add an x to both sides and then flip the inequality around. Let's say that x is less than 3. Oh, it's like a heart. And then over here, factoring a difference of perfect squares into binomial conjugates, or simply adding 1 and taking a square root, will let us know that x is not equal to positive or negative 1. Therefore, our final answer is going to be from negative infinity to negative 1, union, negative 1 to positive 1, union 1 to 3. That represents all of the real numbers that are less than 3 but not equal to neither positive 1 nor negative 1.